guess. Finally left with the plan fear. Never trust your sus. We define what's real. Shuffle shit took losses. You know the deal. It was never an option. Let me submit. It was never an option. Skip a bit. All right, man. Moving on, man. We have the and one documentary, man. The untold story. I wish we could have got into the man tail. We may get into that. At another point, I haven't actually watched that. Yeah, you haven't watched that. Watch oh, that man, that one was be next up, man. That was that was uh, wild too. I've been hearing that it's pretty good. It wasn't a story that was really interesting, and I was like, that time came, he's gone. I didn't care that he had an imaginary girlfriend or something like this. Uh, catfish. catfish. I, ain't gonna, yeah. I ain't gonna disrespect a man like that. Like he was catfish and he was kind of fool, but I mean, like. That's still a kind of sucker move, in my opinion. No matter how you they try to reword it, man. Like how you watch it, watch it. How you you the top you off on Notre Dame? You you got a girlfriend that just like right there beside (laughs) you. Like no, I'm not. (laughs) That that part just don't. No, no, no. Like that that part still like (laughs) irks me. But I I will watch it. I will hear his story. I I don't see it changing my opinion too much. On I will say like. Okay, he probably was truly was catfish, but why did you even put yourself in that situation that let that happen? That's just dumb. We met you off to off off the rails, so, man. Back to Aaron. Oh. Back to Aaron. <laughs> this man really Aaron really one. displaying so, his feelings. Um, <laughs> and and one just did that uh, documentary. What was that documentary? Was it on Thirty for Thirty? I think it was a Thirty for Thirty, right? They did the and one kind of mixtape. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I missed that one. I still got to catch that one. I, I thought it was pretty good, but then it it only showed like that volume one of guys. Like it didn't have the full uh, roster and tell the full story of how it kind of went on. So. Uh, and we was told when that one came out, everybody was watching. And they was asking about these names. They'll say, "Hey, wait for the Netflix one." But the Netflix one dropped, and I, th- I think it did a great job of like explaining the story, the rise, uh, putting you back in that love mode, and, and you know, telling you like how just some street ballers came in almost equivalent to like NBA stars in in, in, a, in a sense, you know what I mean? Where they elevated just that street play and you knew these names and it wasn't just names of your neighborhood guys. These was like, this is people down South uh, knowing names of people up North and everything that not thrown in just a rap song or something like this. You getting the CDs and uh, the way it kind of changed up the game on the, the moves and everything, the dribbling aspects of it and stuff like this. So, uh, a lot of those, a lot of those guys did not make it to the league. Did not, could not cut it in the league. That's it. Uh, sweet, but they was good at what they did. Uh, you would say the seventies had Harlem Globetrotters and stuff like this, and they had their little space. And their, well, this was a, a new lane carved out for this uh, for our generation. And that street ball shit was was tough and real, you know. Yeah, dope, dope analogy, man. Uh, and I know they brought it up in the doc a little bit, alluding to that. But that, that was, that's, a, that's a good analogy because, I mean, in the hood, man, like you, you couldn't tell me nothing about. I had my Olas on. That, that's what we used to call them, and one shorts. And uh, I had all the gear, you know, with the cutoff sleeves before the cutoff sleeves was a thing. You know what I mean? Or just doing all that stuff in the the cool sayings that they had on there, like the shit talking sayings, like everybody was rocking that, you know? And I remember um, going to like a few, when I used to hoop, going to a few hoop it up and just like the AM1 um, mixtape when it would come, you know, I mean, those guys always kind of were playing it and why, but like when it was a thing and they were rolling through and why, like I, I saw it live and man, it was just like, just like you saw with the pictures at the Rucker or now, you know, in current day with Dykeman, basketball in New York City. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just was a dope thing to see. And I, I like to see the, uh, I like the rise and fall aspect of the uh, documentary in terms of just, you know, how much money they were detailing. So that's what I was thinking all along because like I had long, not forgot about Anne Juan Perez, but I was kind of more so not thinking about, damn, it, it did kind of, they had a nice little, what, five six seven year run yeah it was like it was like seven eight year run yeah yeah eight year run uh and 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 before i lose my point remind me to come back to the nike aspect of this uh, Mm -hmm. because i thought it was kind (laughs) of nike was on some bullshit yeah the usual uh but uh but yeah so i I like that uh they kind of talked about when the guys started to be like hey man like you know, we signing these contracts, but you you saw like a compare um, a contrasting viewpoint. Uh, remember, I forget one. I don't know. It wasn't Ali Mo. Rest in peace, Ali Mo. Um, 
forget what who the guy was. It was two two uh, of the N one ballers sitting together, like pretty much the whole documentary. But remember, he was trying to convince his buddy, like, "Hey, man, you think they did us wrong? You think they did us wrong yeah. in terms of these contracts?" And he was like, "Ah, you know, yeah." And in my mind, I was thinking what Ray for Austin uh, said. Skip to my Lou was like, "Yo, I mean, he signed the contract. The contract is the contract. You only get what you can negotiate in the contract." You know what I mean? And uh, do do you feel like the team at N one that started it took advantage, or do you think they like highlighted these guys' profile to be able to go get money outside of N one as well? You know what I mean? You think the guys not really acknowledging that part? No, I, I, I so the way the business was coming, and you can hear it like when they was talking about it and stuff like this. The money was coming in so fast. Like and the 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 business aspect of it is changing so frequently, and you got to hire in the different aspect. I know these athletes was your main draw, but the numbers they was putting up there on screen didn't sound like they was just like you know just doing them completely dirty. Like they some of the lower tier ones made significantly less money, but when you compare that to what uh, they would be making on a practice squad or somewhere else on the, uh, uh, or working at a some rec center or something like that way they was going to do like I felt like it was equivalent type pay and all the perks and stuff they got I, they, they didn't get diving into that who's paying for all your for them I know you saying like these people were eating food bro I, I just know that like any business you go to hey my boss is probably eating better than me like, that's, that's just a given <laughs> I go to their buzz you know what I'm just gonna go hang out with them for a couple of days here so I can eat the same thing as them for hey they, they pay for it you know what I mean so I, I didn't really grasp that I think that's somebody you know just like thinking like everything is supposed to be handed to you as as we can see, and as we, we're sports fans, like you have to go renegotiate for these contracts and stuff like this. You got to be willing to give up something and hold out to kind of push and make them move. Because once that contract is signed, you're kind of on the hook for uh, what as that contract reads. Now, yeah. okay, if you yeah. had the proper if you had the proper representation, which I don't know if they had or not, like that, they would tell you at that point, like, hey, yes, you signed this, but. This is where the money was at at this time. You are open to renegotiate now because the money that changed overall for the company. Uh, and they're not just going to, nobody's just going to give it to you. They may give you some bonuses here and there, but they ain't just going to, hey, we're going to triple your pay. That shit ain't uh, going to happen without some tough talks. <laughs> I, feel, I feel you. I feel you. But, you know, the other part is it, um, for me, is like the, the lion's share of the, initial guys that started it and got it off off the floor you know what i mean i think those guys are from i mean even think you can go to hot sauce i know he came on a little bit later um in terms of the team but he was still early on but he just that came out of prison you know what i mean yeah. you got all these guys that are just fresh off out the hood so to speak outside of professor you know you had some guys that kind of came from uh different backgrounds but by and large part I don't think these guys have that type of business acumen and you know you're you're telling me you're going to pay me you know $15,000 I think that's like probably the lowest amount of um, money I saw in the documentary you're telling me you're going to pay me $15,000 for what you know company basketball for three months for three months oh yeah that's $5,000 a month like you know not a lot of people are making that (laughs) you know what I'm saying like if you if you tell a lot of street ballers right now if they would make $5,000 a month just hooping I think you will see a lot of people sign up for that. You know what I'm saying? In current day, you know what I mean? So, um, but I, you know, I just think some certain people's business acumen um, or their living situation didn't allow them to have negotiating power. (laughs) You know what I mean? But as you move forward, those are definitely things. If you felt that, I think could have been addressed in a more professional manner, like man, um, manner outside of throwing pizza <laughs> in the owner's face. Like, I mean, that's, that's just some ignorant <laughs> that motherfucking some, shit. That was some ice cube type shit. Ain't like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I mean, by any means like necessary, it. but I mean, you, you gonna suffer the consequences too, bro. So, um, uh, but I, I like how they did acknowledge they saying they wish they could have went back and, you know, gave them stock options. Cause there was more than there was more employees than they were like they was treating them just like yeah. they was treating them. The, uh, any of the the contracts with the with the athletes and stuff like right. that, so they were just uh, merchandising. Uh, so on that front, and then I, I did like how they were showing, you know, how 
professor, the professor came in because I still follow the professor on like Instagram because he's still out there doing these little videos and stuff like this. And it's still kind of fresh and watch and stuff like this from time to time. So, uh, but you can tell he was like, they was putting him up as the face. And I don't fault him at all in that. Like if, if they, he represent and he can continue building up the company and, and you know, he bring in a certain type of dynamic and, and, and fandom that's going to add to it. You know, representation matters. That's what we always talk about. Representation, representation, you know, kind of matters. Like we want to see our superheroes on the screen. We go support it. You know what I mean? Like we want to see our TV shows and things like this. Well, that same thing kind of take effect in this, uh, in this and one ball and the same thing is going to take effect in like rap and stuff when we're talking about it. I mean, there's a reason M makes more money, man, because like, he can attract that whole suburban crowd, you know what I mean? Because they can see themselves as poverty of Eminem. And then now you got the same thing that's happening off of Professor. And you do want to put him out there, especially when you're talking about selling more and more tickets and stuff like this. Because, hey, that's going to show that it's not just a hood thing, which we was hold, holding in the Rutgers. Everybody now you want to sell out as a square <laughs> guard. Yeah. Like, that's a person. I, that's how I was looking at it as I've seen. I was just like, I, I see what they was doing. I see why the people are kind of jaded from it. But at the same time, it was in this one dynamic and you're trying to open it up and say, no, we can sell to everybody. And this was your avenue in. Y'all only had one on the team. Y'all only had one. You got to utilize them. You got to utilize them. And I'm, I got to imagine you came across a lot of different um, nationalities going across the, the states and overseas. Like people forget that this thing went global, man. And, and quickly, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, you know, people really, really wanted to be like these ballers. I remember going outside and, you know, I'm, I'm an adult at this point where Aaron one is kind of really coming to fruition, but still like, you know, still, trying hoping, moves. still trying to get them moves and just like stuff that you could pull off legally in, in game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think, to a certain degree, they affected the NBA game, which they talked about. They're like, this doc is dope because they, they went and showed some of the moves that the guys were doing. Um, you know, like people still do. Uh, I'm also, what was it? The other doc I watched NYC point guards. Um, y'all check that out. I don't know if you check that out um, yet either. Um, Prez, but mm-hmm. um, you know, just kind of like the God sham God move where you throw the ball out one way and then you go the other way, you know, and it's, you know, people been doing that or just like the book, between the legs, alley, you like stuff that they was doing in the and one joint. Um, you just you saw the the correlation, and you got to believe like these guys got it from those guys because that's kind of the first time I was seeing it. That you you didn't really see guys really doing and one like moves in the NBA in the late nineties. You know what I mean? So I mean they they, they affected the culture for real, for real, man. I, I you really know something I was talk. thinking about like while I was up in there when I was watching it. Too. I know they only played for like three months though. None of these guys dealt with like injuries. You had the Stephon Marbury injury they talked about at the beginning. That's in the league league, but they was playing a lot of basketball at a lot of time. And they were saying, talking about all the other stuff, the drinking and smoking, they were still doing wild. On tour, but <laughs> yeah, just like the old days. Like, like, <laughs> imagine like the fact that all of them left there and like, I'm saying nobody had like a complete tear of their ankle or, you know, ruptured a, 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 a hamstring or anything like this. Like they was all playing and still going throughout that time frame. I thought that was kind of a hidden little fact on there. Like, I don't know if they was playing through those things, but I, it's not one of those things I remember, like anybody, you know, sustained a serious injury playing the street ball. Yeah, yeah, man. So, like I said, man, great doc. Y'all go check it out, man. Uh, like I said, rest in peace to Cadillac, Ali Mo, and just, um, you know, uh, the other guys that aren't here today as far as the ballers, man. But, um, yeah, great, great era, man. Great era of street ball, man. They definitely sparked what, what you see today in, in all these little independent leagues and just, like, these guys having that ambition to to do a Drew League, a Dykeman, and Rucker, and just it be nationally televised. I mean, the uh, Drew League was on my NBA app, bro. I was watching that okay. when I could. I got to so, bring you back to it. You just said, remind you about the Nike before we close out. Okay, yeah. So, man, what, what do you think about Big Brother coming in to just really trying to steal that uh, that street cred? Who, Nike? Yeah. 
I remember that commercial too. I forgot though. It's like a Nike. A direct <laughs> shot. But I remember the dude dribbling, do, 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 do. and they started putting that in that scary movie and stuff like that. And when they was making fun of the dribbling and stuff like this, but yeah, I remember that. And they just snatched back that that street side of it real With quick. Just right? thirty seconds of a commercial, like immediately, then yeah. you start. See, but then you start seeing Nikes like really focus on their basketball uh, division and really handing out a bunch of different. Um, you know, sneaker contracts like they used to do back in the day. Like you remember we had the Worms with the Dennis Rodmans. We had the, um, the, not the Admirals, but we had, um, you know, we had a bunch of different sneaker Barclays. We had Jordans, like Nike Scott had all the, with the up Pippins, pulls, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking I'm spacing on David Robinson, but like, there's a lot of like, little dope sneakers for sneakerheads. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? That Nike really was doing in the 90s and then kind of the fell pennies. off a little bit. Pennies. Pennies, the pennies, and then kind of fell off a little bit in that that space where and one kind of came in. And I was looking at them shoes and I was like, yo, I can't believe <laughs> I was hooping in them ugly ass shits. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, but they was dope for the time. They was dope for the time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. can't lie and say I mean, I didn't have that okay. sparked influence into the rest of the, of the yep. others, into Nike and stuff like that, because they were still doing the bulky, have heavy leather type shoes. And like, I mean, we had uh, the phone pauses, but I mean, nobody was really using that. So I, I think they kind of innovated and forced things to go that way. Because then I remember start seeing like the Adidas start to adopt it like a little bit more first, and then Nike kind of came in and started to adopt those style, those style yeah. shoes. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. it was fire for his time, but the reason why they not retro, you know, <laughs> even no, no. ugly ass Pat Humans get retro. I mean, I love Patrick Humans. Don't don't get me wrong, you know what I mean. But I, I'm not really rocking them. But like they haven't been retro. But that's neither. I'm 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 I'm, I'm digressing like a mug. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never seeking approval, go shifting For the fam, I do the heavy lifting Never hate it, false promises I don't say shit just to really say shit All that bro shit ain't nothing to play with Fake love when dudes really be shading Don't LOL, them real feelings displaying